Farmers in Hawke's Bay's Hill Country are involved in a two-year project funded by the Sustainable Farming Fund. They're looking at how they're adapting to climate change. Scientist Gavin Kenny is working with the farmers to help them with their strategies for adaptation. This current project, I guess for me professionally, is a further development of work that I've been doing with farmers for about eight and a half years now and a continuation of my professional work on climate change. Um, and for the last eight and a half years, my focus has been um, bridging the science of climate change to, to farmers. I think having come from a farming background originally, my grandparents and parents were farmers, Getting involved in climate change, it always felt to me a bit of an up-in-the-air sort of subject, but it always mattered to me to connect it to the practical reality of farmers. When I first came here to Hawke's Bay eight and a half years ago, and when I first went out and talked to farmers, and I was coming as a scientist saying, climate change is an issue, you need to be thinking about it, thinking about adaptation, and, and their response was, well, we're already adapting. What are you talking about? We're already doing, we're already adapting to uh, changes we're experiencing. So I had, I had to turn my approach on its head actually and stop talking and start listening more to what they had to say. And I've learned a lot through that process. I'd like to be able to change my farming system to suit the climate that we've got with the right pasture species that are going to handle the dry periods and the cold periods and that that we get. And um, yeah, be able to, um, you know, Keep, keep it so I don't have to go and sell store stock when everyone else is selling store stock, basically. There's not a lot of people out there doing research on hill country farms and that. It seems to have all been about dairy in the last few years. You know, we're a part of the industry as well, and I feel that sheep industry is getting pushed further and further back into the hills, and if they want to keep having a sheep industry in New Zealand, they have to start thinking about making these hills work, you know? Well, it was quite good, um, the interview of the 20 farmers, it, it came out with a general consensus of how everyone's thinking and what people are doing. We filtered through that information and some of the key things that have come out are probably an important one is uh, with their stock. And uh, I would say uh, significant changes both with their stocking throughout their stocking policy with the, the ratio of cattle to sheep, so a lot more cattle than in the past, um, changes in breeds, um, a lot more flexibility, a lot more trading stock that they're carrying now. So a big, big factor there is flexibility. A question that came out and was a key issue that was raised by a couple in particular was where's the breeding country going to be in Hawke's Bay in the future? And then there's also the issue of pasture management as the increasing numbers of farmers and certainly quite a number of the ones we interviewed have been proactive and leaving longer covers and that's obviously uh, retaining more moisture down in the soil when they've got it and you know there are there are a few uh, a number of other issues around water water security and information but th those are probably two key ones I think we just need lots of flexibility in the system so that uh, whatever occurs we can significantly change our stock our, our stock policy around quickly and adapt fast well, at the moment we're running 3,100 mixed age ewes, so that's down from 3,500. Uh, we've got 950 hoggets. We've managed to keep our ewe flock intact. We had a consultant in here a couple of years ago and we did a review, and our uh, ewes were doing 11.5 cents a kilo of dry matter, so they're the main breadwinner for us at the moment. So I've kept them intact, but then against that we've significantly dropped our cattle numbers um, to get through these droughts. But I don't think it's going to remain like that. The cattle numbers will probably come up and the sheep numbers will probably decrease. The changes have been that we are um, using oats because they, they grow into the winter longer, grow to, got a lower growing point, and we're probably going to change from Swedes to straight kale. Uh, the kale seems to handle the significant dry um, better than Swedes. I would say at least 50% of the farmers we talked to identified a need for genuinely independent information and alongside of that what we might now consider rather basic research. I mean these guys are having to take things in their own hands now because there's nothing in place to support the sort of ideas that these guys are exploring independently. Basically all I'm doing is trying to do some trials with oats, barley, lupin, uh, lucerne, 
things like that, that, yeah, I can grow into the winter better and get some feed happening. What I'm going to do is, because um, I've got a, a my own direct drill, I'm going to um, do a 100 metre strip of every variety of plant I can um, think of that might be suitable for this farm and um, compare, then I'll have them all side by side and um, I'll start them in a wet area under the hill and I'll drill straight out onto the dry area and I'll see which, I'll compare them and see which one's the best. Out of the project I'm hoping to get information and unbiased information on what sort of species suit these sort of climates, can handle a significant dry, can handle the cold and basically increase my production. And I'm very open-minded about what that species of plant or plants may be. After we went through the interviews, we had a few questions in our minds that we wanted to clarify with the farmers. And so we sent them out a little questionnaire ahead of doing the workshop. All of them said that they see a greater role for trees in Hawke's Bay in the future. Trees provide shelter from wind. Wind is a very big factor and probably not recognised as much as it ought to be in this region. And, and drought, the farmers certainly know it, but it's not always well factored in. Another big one is with shade. If we're going to get hotter and drier conditions, um, animals need shade. I think anyone that has trees knows that there are definite benefits. Soil and water protection, aesthetics, and you can't underestimate the, un underestimate the aesthetics actually. You know, I've, I've, you've got a strong farm forestry group here in Hawke's Bay, and I've talked to farmers who have uh, said that the trees were actually their saviour in a drought. I'm just out there to learn. I'm trying to be proactive about it instead of just being defeated by it. I'm trying to think of ways of getting through it. Independent information is quite hard to find and um, information from people who actually know, um, you know, have trialled it before or, or, or done something that's quite rare. Um, yeah, I, it's quite hard, I think, finding information. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.